I mean, I love you guys. Really, really do. I love you. I love you a lot. It's good to see y'all this morning. And uh, how many of y'all are thankful for being in God's house? I mean, this, this is a good place. I feel, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I don't take this for granted. When you walk into this church and you feel the presence of God the way you feel it, that's something right there. Uh, it's something. I, I want to thank you guys, even before I get into the Word, thank you for allowing me and my family time to get away. Um, how many of you know it's important to, to get out sometimes? You just got to get away. You just got to get away. You got to get away. And I also want to thank Pastor Joey uh, Hicks, man, for filling this pulpit last week. What a, what a man of God. Hallelujah. What a, what a man of God. Yeah, and I heard you guys had a Holy Ghost Spirit-filled time. Amen. I'm so jealous. I'm so jealous. But uh, isn't that the way it goes? You, you miss church one Sunday. You miss church one Sunday. And the Holy Ghost feels the temple like he felt it last week. Man, great job, Pastor. I appreciate you guys and love you. And again, thank you for letting me, um, thank you for letting me get out of here just for a little bit. Uh, someone asked me, they said, well, Brother Joey did a good job. And I've sat there going, yeah, I already knew that. And then they said, well, how'd you know? I said, because I don't let any joker fill this pulpit. This is a special place. And you better be careful. Who you allow to preach the word of God. Because what you're trying to build up for years can be tore down one Sunday. If you're not careful. If you're not careful. So, uh, but anyway, man, go ahead and look at your neighbor. I'm ready to preach. Go ahead and look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Come on, it's preaching time. Y'all are in trouble today because I got back off vacation. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and look at somebody else. They wasn't listening to you. Say, neighbor, it's preaching time. It's preaching time. It's preaching time. Honey, it's preaching time. Oh, I love the word. I'm going to start a series today. Um. I wrestled with this one because what I'm getting ready to preach to you, I never heard in church. I'm uh, 49 years old. I've been a Christian since I was seven years old. I became a Christian when I was seven. I don't, I don't apologize for that. I had a lot of people try to talk me out of that. They said, man, you didn't understand what you, were, what you believed. I still don't understand everything about the Bible. I just trust him. So I'm getting ready to start a series today, and I really, 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 really need y'all to pay attention. Pay attention. I'm gonna, I called this, I felt this in my spirit, I titled it Unleash. Unleash. Everybody say Unleash. Everybody say Unleash. Everybody say God Unleash me today. Ooh. So Unleash. This is part one. I don't know how long this series is going to go. I was aiming to start another series, and I wrestled around with it. I had a staff meeting. We started talking, dialoguing, and this is where God ended up. And so I do not apologize for what I'm getting ready to teach you. I do not. I, well, let, me, let me get into this. I, I want to stay close to this. The word unleash. Everybody say unleash. Here we go. The word unleash. When you say, God, unleash me. Here's what you're saying. It means to be released. It means to become unrestrained. Can you imagine what this church would look like if we were released? If we were unrestrained. I need somebody to say, God, help me today. Yeah, yeah, unrestrained. No reservations. I love this. Oh, God, Lord, I want more of you. You won't get no more of God. God needs more of you. And when God's got more of you, you will see heaven explode here on earth. So what I'm saying is this, when you say, God, unleash me, what you're saying is, God, I need to be released. Some of you are living in a 20-year past sin that you've been not released from. You're paying more attention to 20 years in the past than your current day. You're paying more attention to an eight-inch rearview mirror than your a full six-foot windshield. So listen, if you're anything like me, because I'm going to take my heart out in this series, and I'm going to set it here because we're getting ready to get real. If you're anything like me, you've been to church all your life. All your life. And you said, is this it? Is this it? Elkhorn, have we arrived? Have we got everything that God's ever going to give us? So if you're anything like me, I ask this question. Is there, is there more to the story? Is there more to church than what I've seen in the past four or five decades? Is there more to this thing called God, called Jesus, called Holy Spirit? 
in, 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 our, in our churches today. Because the Bible says, listen to this, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2, 9. Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost. 1 Corinthians 2, 9. No eye has seen. This is Bible. Either we believe it or let's go home. Either the Bible is real and relevant for today or let's go home. Either this God, this Jesus, this Holy Spirit stuff is real or let's go home. I need somebody to believe with me today. Watch what it says. No eye has seen. No ear has heard. Nor in the heart of man can imagine whoo, what God has in store for them. We serve a good God. We serve a God that's crazy about us. Elkhorn, we have not arrived. Are we blessed? Yes. Is God's hand upon us? Yes. But I'm telling you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the best is yet to come. And I need somebody to believe that with me. Come on, somebody. Either you're happy, you're satisfied where you're at, or you say there's got to be something else going on in my life. Whoo, I feel the Holy Ghost. So here's the, here's the deal, here's the deal, here's the deal. I remember when I, when I truly surrendered my heart, truly, now, listen, I played church. I know y'all don't. I played church. I put my time in. I was the president of the youth group, whether y'all believe that or not. But I, I mean, you know, you can con people. Just because you carry a KJV and wear a suit and have a tie does not satisfy and does not qualify you as a Christian. There's got to be some evidence. There's got to be some evidence. There's got to be some evidence. So I remember, I remember, I remember when I truly, 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 truly surrendered my heart to God. When I truly became a student of his word. I'm not talking about just when I taught Sunday school, I'd pick it up Sunday morning out in the church parking lot and do my lesson before I get into church. I'm talking about I sat down and I said, God, Show me, talk to me. God, give me revelation, Lord. Lord, tell, because I hung on to Granny's coattail for a long time. But there's got to come a time in your life and in my life that we say, God, talk to me. God, make this Bible real to me. God, did Peter really walk on water? See, we say that, we read that, we teach that, but do you honest to God believe that there was a man named Peter that walked on water? See, that has set you aside right there. That has set you aside. So I remember, I remember, I remember, there were people in the Bible that were called to be pastors and evangelists. Yeah, and evangelists would go from town to town, city to city. They would go and they would preach the word of God. Sort of like Dr. Dr. Billy Graham. He, he was an evangelist. You ever say amen? He was an evangelist. And I knew what a pastor was. A pastor was somebody that would be the leader of a local church. They would preach the word of God. They wouldn't travel back and forth like an evangelist would, but they would stay in the body. They would oversee the, the congregation and tend to the sheep. That was a pastor. But how many of y'all know that's just two out of five? I'm going to mess y'all up today. Because some of you are just like me. You've been in church all your life, and you've never heard about the five-fold ministry. The five-fold ministry. I knew about pastor, and I knew about evangelist. <laughs> but how I many of you know there's more? There's five. Everybody's good with the pastor. Everybody's good with the evangelist. But nobody don't like the prophet. Nobody don't like the apostle. Nobody don't like the teacher. Ooh, it's going to get tied in here today. Yeah, because most of us and I found out that there's a five-fold ministry, not a two-fold. Most Southern Baptists, mo, most Christians are good with the two-fold. But Brother Willie, there's a five-fold. There's a five-fold. Everybody say there's a five-fold. Yeah, there's a five-fold. I'm going to teach somebody here good today. And most scholars and most theologians, they call this the five-fold ministry. So let's read about it. Because this, I can get up here and teach you, but if it's in the Bible, that's what I want. If it's in the Bible, now you got a choice. Now you got a decision. Is this real? Are you going to accept one, two, three, four, five? Most people accept two. But when they talk about the prophet getting up on the stage and giving a word, is that real? <laughs> That's up to you. Either you're going to believe it or not. Either you're going to believe it or not. There's got to come a time. I'm ready. Y'all ready? I'm ready. That's just, that's just the intro. 
Oh, I'm happy to be home. I'm happy to be home. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 through 16. Ephesians chapter 4. I'm reading now the New King James Version Bible. Because I want to slow down. I want this to get in your spirit. I want you to chew on this. I want you to wrestle with this. And I want you to believe this. Ephesians 4, verse 11 through 16. The Bible says, and he, Jesus Christ himself. He, Jesus Christ himself, not Brian Rafferty, not Jimmy Garrett, not Bobby Walker, Jesus Christ him what? Himself. Watch what he did. Are y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. Listen, if I ever needed y'all to be still and listen to this word, this is the day. Because Satan's going to try, he's going to try to come in and derail me. He's going to try to cause distractions, confusion, but I come by with authority today. I'm preaching this word of God. And we're going to get it. And you say, well, Brian, I don't want it. You might as well leave now. Here's what I'm saying. It's real. How many of y'all watch? Is the Bible real? real. Every word from Genesis to Revelation, is it real? real. Is tongues real? real. Is prophecy real? real? Is the apostle real? real. Is the teacher real? real? I'm telling you, it's real. If it's not, I'm telling y'all, there's got to come a time you take off the diaper and put your big boy pants on. Here we go, here we go. And he, Jesus Christ himself, gave some to be. Huh. I'm going to teach y'all. Some to be. Is this New Testament, Old Testament? That's us. Some to be what? Some to be. And. Why, Brian? Why does it got to be like this? I'm glad you asked. For the equipping of the saints. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Watch, till we all come, here it is right here, listen, to the unity of faith. Faith, everybody say faith. This is a faith-filled word right here today. This is not a vacation Bible school sermon. This is a faith-filled word. He said, you're going to do this until everybody comes together as one. That's why I'm praying this over this church, that this becomes a five-fold ministry church. Not because I want it, because God gave the gift. God gave the gift. Watch this. And of the knowledge of the Son of God, to what? To a perfect man. To the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. That we, here it is, boy, if this is the 21st century church right here, that we should no longer be like children. Woo, toss to and fro. I don't like this church. I'm going to that church. Well, you got 131 to choose from. And carried what about with every wind of doctrine? There is one doctrine and his name is Jesus Christ. It is not Oprah Winfrey. It is not Brian Rafferty. There's one God, one Lord, hallelujah, one baptism, and his name is Jesus Christ. He is the answer. He is the fixer. He's the perfecter. He'll do it all in Jesus' name. He'll do it all. He'll touch you right now where you're at. He's a good God. He's a good father, and he don't mess up. I need somebody to give God praise. I can't help it. I get, the word of God gets me fired up. And I finally believe it. Watch what he says. Every wind of doctrine. Every wind of doctrine. Every wind of, are you once saved? Are you once saved? Or do you got to be baptized to go to heaven? Just that and the other. The Bible gives us all the answers. Every one of them. Well, everyone watch. Let me go on. Oh, I'm trying to slow down. In the cunning, the craftiness of deceitful plotting. How many of you know are people trying to plot against you right now? That is not a child of God. If you're in here today and you are plotting against another Christian in the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke you and I bind you by the authority of God. God is love. We should love one another. We should help one another. We should be there with one another. We should down talk one another. We need each other. Whew. Feel the Holy Ghost. But watch what he says right here. So good. But speaking the truth in love. In love. There may be some hard conversations that you got to have. But he says, everything you do, listen to me, everything you do, you wrap it in love. May grow up in all things into him who is the, uh-oh, 
the second leader of the church. He's the head of what? Christ, yeah. From whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth. Causes growth. We're not growing because we're a Southern Baptist church. You're not growing because Brian Rafferty is your pastor. You're not growing because we got awesome praise and worship. We are growing because Jesus Christ is the head of this church. Ooh, that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. For the edifying of itself in what? Love. So the million dollar question is this. Y'all ready? Million dollar question. Here it is. Do these ministries still exist today? Because listen, that right there, if you answer that one, that's going to solve the rest of it. The problem with humanity, the problem with individuals, the problem with churches, the problem with pastors, the problem with leadership is we think we're smarter than God. We think we know more than Jesus Christ. For some odd reason, it just don't work like it worked for Peter. All them signs, wonders, and gifts, they were for the apostles. They're not for us. That's what most churches believe. That's why they're a stinking mess. That's why they're a mess. I'm telling you today, we serve a God. You may walk in here sick. He can touch your body right now in the name of Jesus Christ that quick. You may have had a 20-year depression on your life. I serve a Father who art in heaven that loves his children. And he can touch your mind, hallelujah. He can touch your body. He can set you free. And he's going to do it today in Jesus Christ's name. I just need people to believe this stuff. So watch this. Yes, it works. What, you got to pay? Yes, the five-fold ministry is still working, still in motion, and still available for me and you today. How many of y'all believe that? See, the problem is this. We're not preaching and teaching the whole canon of the Bible. We're not. We're leaving out things that are hard to talk about. We're leaving out things, watch me, that are hard to talk about. But listen to me. It is my job as your pastor to educate the sheep. It is my job to be the protector over your life. That when a wolf is on the horizon, you don't have to run. You know how to fight that wolf. You know how to stand still and watch the Lord of the glory of God go before you. Huh. Listen, I'm telling y'all today, listen, we're leaving out things. We're, we don't like talking about tongues. You know why? It's very uncomfortable. It shouldn't be. It should be normal. We don't like talking about prophecy. Now, do some people get up in their own flesh and their own skin, and do they, do they miss it? Yep, they sure do. You know why? We wage, we wage battle against the flesh all the time. I do. Man, I battle this sermon. I said, God, if I preach this sermon, they're going to look at me like I'm crazy. But I'm just telling y'all, at some point in your life, you got to talk about the things that are tough. you got to deal with things that make your flesh very uncomfortable. you got to deal with this stuff. Do people get up and, and speak in tongues? No, lot. some people miss it. But tongues are real. There's a private tongue and there's a public tongue. And the Bible talks about it. And if I'm in my prayer closet and if I'm sitting on that front row and I'm praying in the Holy Ghost and somebody hears me, I don't have to have an interpreter. That prayer language is my language talking to God. Somebody help me. I don't need y'all's interpretation. Because why? I'm not talking to you. I'm a Southern Baptist pastor preaching on tongues. Boy, that right there. <laughs> Okay, oh Lord, let me get back. You know why, man? It's real. First Corinthians chapter 12, a whole chapter. First Corinthians chapter 14, a whole chapter. Ephesians chapter 6, Jude chapter 1, verse 18 through 21. It's all over your Bible. Deal with it. Read, read it, that might help. Man, my prayer is this, that we'll just be the New Testament church. I'm not asking us to do anything that is not in that Bible. How many of y'all want to see signs, wonders, and miracles? How many of y'all want to see healings? Listen to me very carefully. 
until the church lines up vertically, you'll never see horizontal worship. Until the five-fold ministry is in motion. I'm telling y'all, I know what I'm preaching today. I've studied this. I've become a student of this. And if you want to talk, watch, call me. We'll talk about this, but watch this. You're not, you're not going to get my opinion. You're not going to get what I think. I'm going to push and push and push you back into the Word of God. Thus saith the Lord. This is what God said. It's in the book. So what is the five-fold ministry? Are y'all ready? Y'all ready for this? I'm going to say that means yeah. That means no. That means I need to get out of here. Yeah, you might, because here's the deal. I'm telling you, when the five-fold ministry gets in motion, we're going to become healthy. We're not going to be on life support no more. But listen to him, we've got too many churches. Prove me wrong, prove me wrong. We've got too many churches. Knows exactly what the worship service is going to be like before the worship team even gets on the stage. They know there's going to be three songs, a 10-minute sermon, and nobody's going to get saved. The baptistry ain't going to stay. That is not a New Testament church. Ooh, I missed y'all so much. Y'all may not never let me go on vacation again, but I missed you. So what does the five-fold ministry do? God gave, listen to me, God gave five gifts in ministry to, op- listen, to operate in his church. Five. And we're going to be talking about the gifts. We're going to be talking about tongues. We're going to be talking about prophecy. We're going to be, watch, we're going to talk about the whole Bible. We're not going to leave the hard things out. How many of y'all are glad you're at a church that talks about the hard stuff? Yeah, man, that we just talk about it. I'm not saying I'm right about everything. Watch this. Can I be honest with y'all? I don't understand it. But it's real. And I know how to finally fight my battles. And it's not with American English. It's when the Holy Ghost drops in my belly and a fire starts staring me up and I know how to fight my battles finally. Pastor done gone crazy. No, Pastor finally got revelation. Oh, y'all, I want y'all to be happy for me. I'm happy for me. A five-fold ministry. What is a five-fold ministry? Because we got a lot of cray-crays out there teaching a lot of cray-cray things. I'm here today to tell you and declare to you what is a true Holy Ghost five-fold ministry. It's so simple. Today, if you're a note taker, take this down. It'll set you free. Ooh, five-fold ministry. What is a five-fold ministry? The apostle. The apostle. The apostle. He's the one that governs the church. He's the one that casts vision. He's the overseer. A lot of times you'll see the apostle going from, like the apostle Paul. Matter of fact, he was an apostle. Check me out. The apostle Paul. He was an apostle. He went from city to city. He overseen the churches. You see him a lot of times going in, putting order in the church. You'll see them govern the church, and they'll cast vision. Thus saith the Lord. This is what God said. That's what an apostle is. Watch it. They, they shouldn't scare you. An apostle is a man, watch, of God. It's a man of God. Number two, the prophet. Here's one that I can count on one hand that I've seen truly activated in a church. Yeah, I'm probably, to be honest, we count on two fingers. That I've seen churches operate in the prophetic gift. What is the prophet? The prophet is the one that guides the church. In other words, man, they'll speak, watch this, revelation. They'll, they'll speak revelation, thus saith the Lord. This is what I see in my spirit. And watch this. I feel the Holy Ghost. A true prophet scores 100% all the time. True prophets score 100% all the time. If, if they've got a word from God and they get up here and say, thus saith the Lord, it's not to say, well, I don't know. You think that's right? It's not, watch. It's 100%. It's 100%. They're the ones that gets up and they guide the church. They guide the church. They speak revelation. They speak revelation. Number three, the evangelists. I love this, because this is where people say I am. 
They say, Brian, you're more than an evangelist than you are a pastor. Well, you take that up with God. Maybe here's, here's, what, here's what God just spoke to me. You can have more than one of these gifts. I, I, I know that I know that I know that I am your pastor. But boy, I love winning souls too. I love swinging over hell on a wet noodle and saying boo at the devil. I love giving hell hell. An evangelist is the one that gathers the people and he's a soul winner. He's a soul winner. I consider myself a soul winner. I don't want any of y'all to die and go to hell. Y'all hear me? If you go to hell, it's your own bad fault. Because everybody can be saved. There's a, there's a, there's a, 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 a doctrine out now it's about Calvinism. It's in the Southern Baptist, in the Kentucky Baptist Convention. They're wrong. And I'll probably get a call this week, but they're wrong. For God so loved the Fight with him on that. God loves us so much. You think God created hell for us? Matthew chapter 25 says that hell was created for the devil and his angels. My name wasn't written in. I'm going to heaven. Turn to your neighbor and say, are you going to heaven? I'm going to heaven. An evangelist is a, is a soul winner. A pastor. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. A pastor is the one that guards the church. Guards the church. He's the protector. You know what it is? If I see a wolf come after y'all, I'm going to smack it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill it. I'm a wolf killer. You say, Brian, you do that for everybody. Yeah. A pastor's heart is no respecter of person. A true shepherd. Watch. In John chapter 10. Let me can I teach y'all just real quick. I may not get through this. It's okay. I'm going to take my time with this series of sermons. Because we need to know. In John chapter 10, the shepherd would lay across the threshold... So when the wolves were on the horizon and they looked down up in the sheep pen and they say, I'm going to get that sheep over called Sarah. Oh, the shepherd would lay across, put his body across a threshold that the wolf could not come in to the sheep's territory. And I'm just telling you, a pastor's heart, a pastor's heart, good, bad, or ugly is willing to lay his body, hallelujah, across the threshold that when the wolf is trying to come in God's house, I'll do whatever I got to do to stop the big bad wolf because I serve a big bad God. Somebody give him praise on that one. Yeah, come on, somebody. He's the protector. I know we got a security team. And thank God we do. I feel very protected. I do. Thank God. Listen to me. They are protecting the sheep. So like they got the pastor's heart, huh? Yeah. So if you've got the gift of protecting, man, you got, you got a pastor's heart. You care for people, it's pastor's heart. You love the sheep, good, bad, ugly, they stink. <laughs> you just love the sheep. You just love the sheep. And sometimes, watch this, they stink. Sometimes they'll turn around and bite you. Turn your neighbors out. I hope he ain't talking about you. <laughs> See, Joey, let me tell y'all something about Joey Hicks. Here's Joey Hicks. He ain't like Rafferty. Rafferty's like a D9 dozer. I'm just telling you. Joey turned around. He said, I, I know I'm not talking about you. <laughs> okay, thank God. Yes. That's a smart man. That's a smart man right there. Yeah, he receives that. Listen, another thing, too, that the church needs to do, we need to celebrate that the grave is still empty after Easter. He did not get back up in the tomb. He's not bad. Uh, he, he's out of the grave. He's still standing. He's still God. He's still got us. I need some. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a good pastor. God is a pastor. Watch this, a teacher. Everybody say a teacher. Yeah, a, a teacher tells it and a preacher yells it. <laughs> I'm not going to get through this. But here's the deal. I want to take my time with y'all because here's the deal. I love you. I'm so tired of God's sheep being miserable. We don't, we don't know that when the storms of life come our way, we tuck our tail and we, we bow down to the enemy. It's time for God's church, God's people to start flowing with the Holy Spirit. Watch, and the Holy Spirit's not going to do anything to hurt you. You don't have to be scared of the Holy Spirit. He's a good, gentle spirit. He, a matter of fact, he's like a wind. How many of y'all ever stood out in a field and just let the wind blow upon you? 
It's like the Holy Spirit. Some of y'all are scared to death of the Holy You know why? Because you want to control him and he's wanting to control you. You've got to be led. And listen, God just spoke this into my spirit too. He's feeding me. Y'all just <laughs> hang with me. You drive cattle, but you lead sheep. You drive cattle, but you lead sheep. My job is to lead you. Not, not to get a poker. Oh, get them, man. Get them, man. No, that ain't, that ain't. <laughs> Surely goodness and mercy, you know. That ain't my job. You come on, smile, somebody. You're not on candy camera, but you're up on Elkhorn. Amen. Listen, you, you, you drive cattle, but you lead sheep. That's what pastors do. They lead. They lead. They lead. And when they see the wolf, they protect. They protect. A teacher, what does a teacher do? What does a teacher do? It grounds the church. I love Wednesday nights out here at Elkhorn. We teach. I try to. Every once in a while, that preacher boop, pop back up. But I try to teach. I go deep. I'm getting ready to start a revelation study again. I'm excited about this. Because most people are scared absolutely to death of the book of Revelation. We're out of here. Revelation chapter 4 verse 1 says, come up here. We're gone. What are y'all scared of? Well, Brian, the COVID shot is the mark of the beast. I'm going to wear y'all out. Where's the mark of the beast? It's up in the right hand or the forehead. Where did the shot go? Bam. And it hurts me. My little, I got to tell you something. So I went to get my COVID shot this week. It's okay. It's my sermon. I can preach how I want to. I went to get my COVID shot this week. And so the nurse come in there and she said, Brian Rafferty. And I went back. I promise you, I won't stay long in this vein. And uh, I rolled my sleeve up. And she said, Mr. Rafferty, you need to relax a little bit. And I mean, I was flexing all I had. <laughs> I'm all two inches and I'm just flexing. And she said, you need to relax. And I said, I am, ma'am. And she said, are you serious? I said, it's just funny, y'all. I'm laughing myself. And I got her because she said, there, goes, you need to relax. I said, ma'am, that is relaxing. And she said, have you been working out? And I said, I'm glad you noticed. <laughs> See, you got to love people. You got to love. I'm after Austin and Aaron Hash. They're my, they my heroes up in the gym, man. You know what I'm saying? They my rats on acid up in the gym. Hallelujah. Yeah, I'm done. Teacher. Everybody say teacher. They ground the church. They ground the church. They ground the church. They ground the church. They give them wisdom and understanding. They can break a verse down and make you understand it. They're not complicated. They're not complicated. They don't have the preacher voice. If thou was here, listen, King James died a long time ago. I'm glad we got his Bible. No, God's Bible. God just corrected me. It's his word. But I'm telling y'all today, listen to me. I'm done. Praise him. You guys come. You say, Brian, you, yeah, I could, hear, I could go on and on and on. But I, I, here's the deal. I know I, I, y'all got a lot to chew on. You got a lot to chew on. So what did God do? He said, listen, my apostles, they govern the church. Y'all got me? My prophets guide the church. My evangelists gather the church. My pastors guard the church. My teachers ground the church. Y'all got this? Quit complicating the Bible. Quit complicating the Bible. Your little finite minds will never truly understand everything. So the perfecting of the saints, what, what was it for? What was the five-fold ministry for? I'll give it to you and we're out of here. God says it's to perfect the saints. Y'all hear me? Perfect the saints. How many of y'all got junk up in your trunk? Yeah, we all do. If your hand's not up, you really got some junk up in your trunk. Why do we come to church and think the altar is like a plague? Why do we come to church and look at people who raise their hands or have a prayer language or speak in tongues or prophesy as a, as a wart or a wound? It's a gift. It's a gift. And listen, we're going to be gentle with this. We're not going to rush up into nothing. But watch this. I desire the Holy Spirit to fall in this house. He will fall in this house. It's for the perfecting of the saints. Watch. For the work of the ministry. Watch. We'll get to this next week. Everybody's called here. You understand. It is not the pastor's job to do everything in the local church. 
It is not the deacon's job to do everything in the local church. Look at me from that side all the way over to this side. Today, I commission you, you are called into the gospel ministry. Get in your gift. Get in your calling. Let God explode in your life. Quit depending upon man and trust the man and he'll show up. He'll show up. He'll show up. And for edifying the body of Christ. For edifying the body of Christ. So, here's my question to you. Where are you at? You say, Brian, I'm not an apostle. Not everybody's an apostle. Well, Brian, I'm not a, I'm not a prophet. Not everybody's a prophet. Brian, I, 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 I can teach. I like to teach. Ding, 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 ding. You're the next contestant. Come on down. In this, in this row right here, I just tell y'all where God's got me. I do feel like an evangelist. I love, I love winning souls for Jesus. I expect somebody to get saved today. Do you? But watch. If, here's the work of an evangelist. Here's one indication you know God's calling you. If you see somebody come to this altar and you feel drawn. And you don't know if they're saved or lost. But you got to know. 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 And you feel drawn to them. Go talk to them. Watch. Look at me. It is okay. To come to this altar. It is okay. Watch. you got a pastor in front of you. It is okay to speak in tongues. You know how long it has taken me to say that? 24 years, Greg. 24 years I've stood in a pulpit. Scared absolutely to death. To say it is okay to speak in tongues. Because I was afraid of people's reactions. I was in bondage. I was restrained. And I'd go home. I'd be under conviction. I didn't understand. And God said, Brian, you don't get to pick and choose what you believe. Either I'm real, I've died, and I'm coming back, and my Bible's real. Or stop, retire, get out of the pulpit. Because I got somebody that will stand up and preach truth. So... We're going, we're going, next week is going to be funny because I now know why God stopped me because I was aiming to do some props this week and I didn't do the props and so God's like I stopped you here you will do props so next Sunday I got some props coming it's going to be great God wins again imagine that listen to me from all over everybody here y'all are beautiful people we, we are the body of Christ we are the body of Christ and God wants his gifts To be displayed in his house. No man, no pastor, no leader has the right or the authority to trump what God has established. God will win. And God will take you out. God will take you out. You try to stand in his way. Do do y'all hear this, pastor? God will take you out if you try to stand in his way. I highly advise God's church, God's people, God's body to get on board. If we're going to see a latter rain greater than the beginning, I believe in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, it's going to happen right here at the Upcoming Baptist Church. I believe God has established this church as the gifting to South Central. Y'all can say what you want. I'm telling you, I believe that with all my heart. So today, here it is. Brian, you say, I'm not an apostle. You may not be. But I promise you, watch this, you ready? You got a gift. You got a gift. You got a gift. Hey, put, Casey, put this on the screen. Romans chapter 11, verse 29. Romans chapter 11, verse 29. He is so stinking good. I did not write this. God did. For the gifts and the callings of God are irrevocable. Y'all know what that means, right? One day, Jimmy, we will stand before God. Well, God, I wasn't really talented to, to, to preach. And God said, to God, I didn't call you to be a preacher. I called you to be an evangelist. I called you to be an apostle. I called you to do this. I called you to be a Sunday school teacher. I called you to be a van driver. I called you to be a counselor. I called you to do something with the gift that I put in you. You know the problem with the body of Christ? We love Christmas, but it's really not your gift till you open it. My God.
Your name may be on it. Ah, huh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hey. You know that's your gift. You know that's your present. You know that's what God gave you. But until you open the gift with your name on it, it'll be a gift laying under a tree just there. I'm speaking today. I'm speaking today that it's your gift with your name on it. Go get your gift. Go get in your calling. Give God the praise. Give God the honor. Let God get the glory out of everything in your life. I need somebody to give God a big praise in here today. Mm. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Come on, stand up all over this place. Come on, let's fill this place with worship. Come on. Come on, in Jesus Christ's name. This altar's open. You say, Brian, I don't know what my gift is. Ask God. Ask God. I promise you, listen. If you're waiting to get the perfect degree, it'll never happen. Because the degree don't outweigh the anointing. You can have alphabet in front of your name and alphabet behind your name. Your skin may be white, black, tan. I'm telling y'all today, in Jesus Christ's name, while he's here, while he's roaming up and down these aisles, ask him, God, what is my gift? God, where is my calling? God, what do you want me to do? See, some of you think you've done got too old. You done clocked out. Watch it. I feel the holy. If God is ready for you, you'll go home. Listen to me. While you've got breath in your lungs, give him praise. While you're alive, don't let nobody else shout us. Come on, somebody. This stuff is real. This is real. As a matter of fact, I'll close with this. Acts chapter 26 will tell you these words. When we die and go to heaven, we will not speak Kentucky. Well, Brian, what are we going to speak? Aramaic. Boy, that will mess the Baptist church up quick. Aramaic. Well, Brian, I don't know it. How do I get it? Look, just pray and say, God, I want to be like you. God, I want to be like you. Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Lord, fill me with your gifts. Fill me with your... I received a text message this morning. A man in this church. Two o'clock this morning. Two, everybody say two o'clock. He's here right now. Two o'clock. Everybody say two o'clock. He prayed this prayer. He said, Brian, I just prayed the dangerous prayer. Man, in this, he said these words. I'm praying that God will give me my prayer language. Yeah, he's here right now. I ain't making this stuff up. Now listen, if you don't believe it, <laughs> you think you know more than God. You got to chew on this stuff. You got to wrestle with it. God, teach me. So here's what I'm saying. Just ask God for it. Just ask God for it. And all of a sudden, he'll get a hold of your tongue. And you will, you will speak faster than a Mississippi squirrel. I don't know where it come from. <laughs> I miss y'all. This altar's open. Come ask God. God, where, where's my gifts? Where's my... Listen to me. Don't, don't grow old not knowing. Isn't that horrible? Go through life. Go through life. Go to church all your life and don't know what God's got for you? Are you kidding me? It's time. Elkhorn, it is my honor. It is my honor to speak over you today. The five-fold ministry has begun at Elkhorn Baptist Church. I need somebody to give God praise in this house. Congratulations. This altar's open. You come. If you want the baptism of the Holy Ghost, we got pastors up here that'll pray for you. We'll do it. We're going to see a New Testament church. I refuse to die and go to heaven and have to stand before God. And God says, Brian Rafferty, I had all these gifts. I had all these callings. I had everything in your life. Here it is. And you didn't accept any of them. Youth group. Allie. Holy Ghost. Spirit field. Destiny. Lee Shane Rafferty. All the way from China. Holy Ghost, Spirit filled, tongue talking, water walking, flame throwing. You want me to keep going on? Because I can keep going on. Daddy can keep going on. Hey! In Jesus' name. I think we need to do what the kids are doing. 
Are you going to sit back and say, well, that little kid's got it today. God is talking to you. God's got your number today. God's got your digits today. I'm talking to you, sir. Do you want this stuff? In Jesus' name, I'm done. Let's get out of here. Come on, this altar's open in Jesus' name.